Good morning. I'm Anna Marie, and it's time for Focus. It's a closer look at people, places, and things right here in our own backyard. Today, it's a good one. It's Carrie Bryant with us, Marketing and Communications Manager with Brightstone. Welcome, first of all. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. So tell people what Brightstone is. If they've never heard of Brightstone, what in the heck? We are a nonprofit educational program for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So we begin taking students at the age of 22, which is the age that they would max out at high school. And we take them from then to beyond. Mm -hmm. So we have current uh, students who are in their 20s and students who are in their 60s. And we work to give them a life of purpose. So just like you or I, where you have a life that you envision, where you want to be productive and social and contribute to the community, Mm They want to do the same thing. So we really work to make sure that we can make that happen for them. And, of course, there's a whole family side of it. So uh, families can send their loved ones to us for our day program and know that they're coming to a loving and spiritual environment while they are out living life and having to work and take care of other children and do all the things that they need to do. So. So it helps the entire family. Absolutely. 100%. What are some of the educational skills? What are some of the educational things that you offer to adults? It's it's a long list. We have a very comprehensive program. So first of all, we have a vocational program, which is a core tenant of ours. So students can enroll in this program as part of our day program. And we partner with community businesses. So several times a week, the students will go out to the community businesses and volunteer slash intern um, and do job responsibilities that are related to those businesses. So they take the skills that we teach them on campus. Uh, It's supported by classwork on campus as well. And then uh, they're able to use those skills out in the community um, and contribute at the community partner. So that's one thing. Uh, We also have a comprehensive educational program. So we have music, we have art, we have the fundamental academics. We also have a health and wellness program. So we have, um, first of all, we have a full-time nurse on staff, which is great because We have a lot of students who have, um, you know, health difficulties. So they may have seizures or other situations throughout the day. So she's able to monitor them, but she can also help them set personal goals. So if they have weight goals or dexterity goals that she can help set with them. And then we also offer like exercise and recreational programs for them as well. Then, of course, we have perhaps most exciting, we're getting ready to open our residential home program. So uh, for the first time in our history, we now have residential homes available to uh, the community so they can come and truly live an independent life. These homes are True residential homes. They have private bedrooms. Uh, We have a house manager who lives on site to ensure their safety. But they can come in and uh, just exercise their skills, take care of themselves, but also be supported by um, home managers as well. Mm -hmm. So those are sort of um, our core classes. And then we also have elective classes. So as our student body grows, we're seeing that they have more and more interests. So we are now expanding our programs to sort of cater to their new interests. So, like what? So we just started a Bible group. Uh, we have a gardening club that we just started. We're going to be introducing a photography class. And so just a lot of new fun opportunities where they can really um, explore their interests further. Do you find that adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities sometimes didn't realize that they had other interests? Oh, absolutely. So um, they'll come into class and we rotate them. So we rotate them throughout the day between all these different classes. And so it really helps them discover that they may be interested in our ceramics class and and doing glazing. And they had no idea that they would be interested in that. Or they may go to paint class and discover that, you know, that they like to draw before. But wow, they can do so much more with it. So, yeah, it really helps them just discover what else they want to explore. Um, and, of course, use their talent. So music is a big, big plus um, at the campus. They just all love music class. But within there, they can even 
play instruments or learn different things that they might be interested in. We had a, a drumming class that came on the campus temporarily. Oh, this, boy. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it was it's really a lot of fun. We tried to uh, find different ways where we can really keep it exciting for them. Yeah. And they, they love that. So we have an adult son with intellectual and developmental disabilities. He is in a home now. He is in his own home in an apartment with two other guys and they have someone who stays with them. But what we found out was he didn't have the desire to go to work. Mm -hmm. He was like, well, why? I never have. I've never needed to. I never really wanted to. He had gone to work at McDonald's for a while before and kind of swept up and cleaned up. But he didn't have that desire to go to work. And now we've gotten him where he's going to the Nashville Humane Association. Oh, awesome. That's part of his program. And he's finding that he really enjoys that. So I think sometimes it's that they've not been exposed two different facets of life like uh, like I like I was for example when I was growing up I had to get out and get a job but they had not ex- he had not been exposed to realize there's a big wide world out there of things absolutely. that I would love to do yes absolutely we take our students on field trips uh, three times a week they rotate on different field trips so like what um, it could be they go to chick-fil-a or they go bowling a lot or we do take them to the Williamson County animal shelter sometimes Um And just being exactly like you said, going to these different places, it's not just a matter of eating. Everything's done with a purpose. It teaches them to follow directions and to be in a group and to use, you know, dexterity more and then to pay attention to what other people do. And they really develop rapport with the people when we go to visit there. They have actual relationships with them and they get so excited when they come there. And so they start talking to them and they learn about their jobs and they learn what's involved in it and it becomes exciting to them, just like you said. So, yeah, yeah, there's definitely a lot more to it than just putting them out there in the community. They're able to explore that world, just like you said, that they may not be able to otherwise. And social skills. Yes, social skills are so important. Uh, Just like us, we want to have friends. They develop the most wonderful friendships on campus, um, regardless of age. And they are just, uh, we have one story of a student who, his name is Tracy, and he was able to live a very independent life, but due to health issues, he had to move back home. And so he's been going to our day program for a while. Well, This student named Jack came on campus uh, last year and is now attending our day program. And he and Tracy have become best of friends. They immediately hit it off. And so they go out on the weekends now and they hang out and they do things. And then they see each other on campus and they just they have best the, uh, the best friendship. And now they are moving into our residential home together. So we are just so excited for them. It's just a, the coolest thing, like how awesome that you can just, like you said, move in with your friends and enjoy that friendship, but then also just live a normal life, just like we want to do. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. We all want to exactly uh, be able to figure things out for ourselves and make our own choices. And I think in years past, that was taken away from adults who uh, had uh, an intellectual or developmental disabilities. That choice was taken away, and you just, you're going to go here. This is where we can uh, take care of you. But now we're finding places like Brightstone have just opened the doors to the entire world to them. Yes, absolutely. And we are just on the cusp of just blowing it out of the water. <laughs> we we moved to our new, new land of dreams off of Columbia Pike in Franklin, just outside of Metro Nashville. Um, we opened the doors to our new learning center in 2022. Yeah. And we have 140 acres there just begging us to build more and more on. So the first phase of our capital campaign was the Learning Center and the first two residential homes. And we brought that phase to the finish line thanks to community support and grants. We are now finished phase one. We have many, many more phases that we want to fulfill um, as the support comes in. So uh, we want to build an aquatic center. Um, that's Whoa. all. Yes, that's part of our plans. A gymnasium and a chapel and an event center. We're going to have a farmer's market. It just goes on and on. And there's so much we want to do, but that doesn't even take up our 140 acres to us. The, the sky's the limit. So uh, priority is we will build more residential homes. That's definitely a priority for us. And then all of these other wonderful amenities are all approved 
and ready to be built. Uh, we're just waiting for the, the right opportunity and for the funding to continue. If you're just joining us, I'm Anna Marie, and this is Focus, and we're talking with Carrie Bryant, the Marketing and Communications Manager with Brightstone, and it is a facility that provides... An educational program for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So are the residential homes near each other, or does it matter, just depend on where you can get the, a, a deal and get the space, or what? They are right next door to our learning center, so... We have some students who are part of our day program that will live in the residential homes, so they will be right next door. Uh, We have other students who will live there full time as well. Um, Each home, because it contains a private bedroom, and I mean, they're beautiful. They look just like a residential home. So they will live in there, and each home has four adults that live in there, as well as the home managers. So we have the first two to open. One home will be for adult males, and the other will be for adult females. Mm-hmm. And then as we continue to be build more, because they're part of our campus, they will just all, they'll be right next door to each other. So they will build this amazing community. I together. love that. Yes. I love that. Yes. And you're able to provide the support and the services to people right there who could walk over. Right, absolutely. And then each one will have its own transportation designated to it. So our home managers will be able to take them out um, in the evenings and the weekends and do fun things like at a ball game or whatever they want to do. They'll get to pick and they'll get to spend that time together and enjoy life outside of the land of dreams as well. What is it called? The Land of Dreams. The Land of Dreams. Who came up with that? I love that. Oh, it was uh, names before my time, but it's (laughs) absolutely perfect. So, (laughs) yes, it's very, very befitting. You seem very excited about this, personally excited about this. Absolutely. I really am. I've been working for Brightstone uh, about two and a half years, and when I came on was right when the land was being developed to start building, you know, this building, the the learning center was already under construction and being built. So for me, it was just to, to just look at this amazing dream coming to life has really just been uh, what drew, drew me to Brightstone. And it's just so exciting to see it just come to fruition. How do people get to Brightstone? Are they referred or are they recruited what happens all of the above i mean we invite anyone of course to apply to our program and we have people who have come out of state and moved to tennessee just to become a part of the brightstone program so uh, we welcome anyone and everyone should come and tour we have an application process where we really want to make sure that those who attend our program are a good fit on both sides and so We want to make sure that you come in and really understand everything that we have to offer and determine if it is a good fit for your adult. And then we will take it from there. And uh, we have scholarship programs. We have our residential program. We have our day program uh, that's offered full time as well as part time. So there's a lot of possibilities for people to really get involved as much as they need to to suit their needs. How is Brightstone paid for? About one third of our operational expenses are covered by tuition. Uh, We try to make it as affordable as possible for the families that we serve. So the other two thirds comes purely from community support and from grants. Uh, We do not rely on government funding. So everything is uh, supported by our community. Mm -hmm. Our first phase was over a $20 million capital campaign and was fully funded by um, that tuition and the community support. So, um, and we are so thrilled just to be able to move on to our next phase. And we're so confident that the community believes in us because they got us through that first phase and that that's going to continue. So, so for an individual, they're paying tuition, like they're going to a college, going to a university or something. Yes, that is correct. Yes. Um, So they will, they will pay a tuition fee and then the rest of that um, operational cost for teachers, operations for our campuses and whatnot is covered through community support. So what about the residential services? Is that part of the tuition? So we have it, we separate it out. So some of the students who live in our residential homes do go to the day program and then some they're not required to. So mm-hmm. some that live um, in our residential home will pay just the residential fee. Oh, so. so they're like paying rent or something. Yes, exactly. Oh. So it's it's considered a program where the, there's some flexibility to it. So if they have a need where their adult needs to come live in a residential home, 
but not attend the day program, they're welcome to do that. But then, of course, we have students um, who are living in our residential home because they've been a part of Brightstem for so long and uh. love it and are so happy they are. They have been asking, the students have been asking for these residential homes for so long they cannot they cannot wait to see them come together so so it's like i love this day program so much i wish i could yes live, I, I just want to stay stay oh. on brightstone's land of dreams forever <laughs> so, wonderful yes. brightstone supports people in the community in other ways besides offering residential services or a day program Yes, so we also have an enterprise program as part of our day program. So students will go to different classes and they will make FDA approved cookie mixes and dip mixes. And and they're really good, too. But they will package those up and then we sell those in our lobby. Sometimes we sell them at festivals. At Christmas time, we have a pop up shop. Um, And then also the ceramics classes, they make gorgeous ceramics and those are for sale in our lobby as well. So the public can come at any time and shop and buy those programs. And it's really neat because the students get so excited to see their work carried out into the community. That's neat. It's really great. So does the money support Brightstone? So right now, um, the money pretty much goes back into our program because oh. our students are only able to produce so much. Yeah. Um, so as we continue to grow, then that's certainly an ultimate goal of ours. Um, we also are going to be implementing this farmer's market, um, so we'll be able to sell products there. Last year, we grew uh, these amazing crops on campus. We had... Karen Rogers, who um, has supported this program for us, came in and distributed these crops because we had grown so many on our campus. There were squash and watermelon, we had over an acre of crops Whoa. to sort of test out a horticulture program for us. And these crops flourished and we were like, God is just raining on them. I mean, they just grew and they were beautiful And so we distributed them to local restaurants. They put them um, in their menus and made butternut squash and different stuff with them. And so Karen has now um, implemented the Garden Club for us. And so that's going to be a little bit more of a structured program for our students so that they can really start to explore their interest in gardening and horticulture. Mm -hmm. And then we can sell products at a farmer's market. We have a barn on campus. I don't think I mentioned that. So it's a perfect place for a farmer's market and Part of that, we will eventually have equine therapy. So part of that will be for the animal care. And then the other part will house a farmer's market for us. So, Why is it important to get people involved in things like horticulture, getting into a garden and digging in the dirt? Why is that important? Well, first of all, it's of great interest to our students. They just think it's fun. Yeah. But <laughs> secondly, it gets them outdoors, which, you know, is just a breath of fresh air. But it goes so much more beyond that, just teaching them about business and selling other products and planning and how to care for them. They look at a plant, but then they go into horticulture and they realize, you know, you got to take the soil and you got to nurture that soil and plant the seeds. They did some small gardens on campus last year where they did it from beginning to end and they planted the seeds and they watched um, these herbs grow within there. And then our chef on campus used those herbs in the meals. And so they're able to just see it from beginning to end and see how what it can be versus just sticking a plant in the ground. I think that's fascinating, and I think that's very helpful for people to see from start to finish. From what I have right now, started somewhere, right, and to see the entire process. I'm I'm fascinated by that. I I know that the the people who are in the day program have to be. Yes, absolutely. It really is rewarding for them. Just and then when the community comes to to buy stuff, they just light up. They just get so excited to see to see them. Will they be helping to sell the products? Will they be what? They will. They'll have a hand in all of it. So um, hopefully we'll be growing pumpkins again. So we'll have pumpkins during Halloween time and our crops again and the horticulture program. So everything we do is very intentional with the community in mind. So we want the community to be a part of everything we build. So the event center and this farmer's market. And eventually we hope to have a cafe on campus where our students can work at. So everything that we have planned and intended, we want it 
to be where the community can be a part of it and integrated Mm -hmm. with our students. Who is the heartbeat behind this? This is has to be a mission. Yes. So we started 25 years ago. It's our 25th anniversary. Uh, the Bryce Stone was started in 1999 by a wonderful woman named Brenda Hawk, who was our founder and CEO until last year. Uh, so she just had this wonderful mission and vision. She used to be in the school system and saw that there was such a lack of resources for these adults to um, have a place to go to and to be productive once they graduated from high school. Right. So. This was a a mission of hers, and we started in 1999. She started it out of space that was donated to us in a local church. And she had four students when the doors opened. And then she just continued to grow it from there. In 2007, we moved to our last building, and now we are just in this amazing facility and amazing campus um, that is just serving so so many more families. Because there's definitely a great need. Somebody just had to figure out how to do it, how to make it happen and put the programs together. Right. Absolutely. And for one woman to have just gotten it started is just uh, such an amazing story for us. And yeah, we we have learned that over 70 percent of students when they graduate from high school with intellectual and developmental disabilities go home and never work and just are lacking in that not only social skills, but also the productive life that they really want to lead and contribute to the community. So that mm-hmm. is that is why we exist. And again, though, the productive life that they don't know they could lead exactly until they exactly. get a taste what's of it right what's available to them out there right and when it can be because as far as they know this is how life is you go home and you just get up and you eat breakfast and you watch tv and then you eat dinner and you watch tv and you go to bed they don't know right because absolutely. they've not been exposed to it absolutely and obviously there are students who have more abilities than other students but they all have abilities and that's what we really work to focus on is how can we maximize their own abilities for them to lead the best life that they want to our special needs son had never washed his own laundry before and we were able to continue his education and now we found out he needs the pods because he'll pour half a jug of soap in the (laughs) but so now we'll talk to him and now that he's in his own apartment he'll he'll call us and we'll go hey what are you doing he's like oh just did a load of laundry doing some laundry and you can tell he's so happy that's amazing pride in that accomplishment it's taken for granted we're like i don't ever want to have to do a load of laundry again but he's like "Eh, just did a load of laundry and it's fantastic awesome. to see yes. a, a person blossom like that. Absolutely. Just the joy. First of all, they provide us so much joy just to be around them. They just, they love life and they just want to, want to do more mm-hmm. all day long. They're motivating. And so, yes, to see that joy is just so fulfilling. What about doing good deeds in the community? Like you have the the farmer's market, for example, that you're, helping them do. Is there something at Brightstone that is teaching them how to be altruistic, how to be charitable and give? Absolutely. So I knew it. I knew it. (laughs) Of course. So one of our work sites as part of our PATH program is the well. uh, And it is just an amazing community partnership. For example, they also um, have a program, a partnership with the YMCA that all of our students go to. But with the well, they are able to go and work there and really see the struggles that other people are going through, but also what we can give back. And so these families that are coming to the well, they are able to help them, you know, assist with their groceries and and meet them and greet them. And maybe it's just giving them a smile or just talking to them, but just brightening up their day, but also being a part of a solution. What is the well? So the well is a food pantry um, that is out in Spring Hill. And so they provide food to needy families um, that can come in and get groceries. And our students work there and help them bag the groceries and pick out stuff and just uh, bring it to their car and, and help make their day a little better. I bet there are lots of smiles and a lot of people with a positive attitude 
uh, when the students have helped like that. I bet they just feel so good about themselves. They do. I had one woman just uh, when I was there, she just started crying. She said, this just makes me so happy to see them be a part of it. We have people who come on our campus and just say, wow, you can just feel the Holy Spirit here. And it's true. There's something just so magical and special about it. And it's just really great just to be a part. It makes you want to be a part of it. And what about the why? So the why we have a partnership for as part of our health and wellness program. So we have our students go there once a week and they will engage in the sports activities there, the game activities there. And next month, which I cannot wait for, they're going to be doing swimming. And so um, they're just uh, a great partner for us to have to help expand our health and wellness program. Do you find that some of the students have challenges to learning to do swimming or learning to do the sports or whatever the games that are going on at the Y? They do, but we really encourage them, again, to do what they can within their abilities. So, you know, they may not be able to play basketball, but they can certainly go into the game room and play, um, you know, on the games there. And so we, we make sure we reach out to find the ways that they can be most active within their abilities. So the Y is great. There's something for everybody there. Uh, regardless of their abilities. And with our huge campus, we're always trying to get them up and moving. Um, So we walk around campus and we keep them dancing and moving and doing all kinds of exercise. So the Y is just a great extension of that off campus to go in and explore those even further. I just spoke with someone from the Y just recently. She would be so happy to hear you say that. Oh, great. Because that is their mission. Yes, to, To make sure that that all aspects of a person's well-being are met. Sure. And so in this case, it's in a special circumstance, people who might need that extra thought put into what can they do? How can we help them do that? Right. Absolutely. And again, just being a part of community, just to go out there and to not feel like you're limited or excluded, but to really find your place within there and and realize that you can still enjoy yourself and still be productive and still be healthy and do it all within your own abilities. Is there anything else that we need to make sure that people know about Brightstone? If you're just joining us, this is Carrie Bryant, the marketing and communications manager with Brightstone. Anything else you, you just think, I hope people know this. I hope they remember this about Brightstone. Just come for a tour. You have to see it in person. It is so hard to just get it across in words because we have so much available to adults with the intellectual and and developmental disabilities. But to come see it in action and to see the work that we are doing and really making a difference within the community uh, is just key. And we invite everyone to come and, and tour and let us tell our story even further to you. Um, So yeah, and of course, visit our website, learn more about us there. You can volunteer. So we have a volunteer um, group. So if you want to come spend time with our students, or we have some groups that will come and help with facilities or cleaning up our grounds, Mm -hmm. whatever your interest is, uh, we have a great volunteer program. So we certainly welcome you to inquire about that. Or make donations. And of course, yes, you can make a donation. So please visit our website at brightstone.org and you can get all the information you need on touring and making a donation as well as volunteering your time. Oh, and you do have annual events that help raise money for Brightstone? We do. We have annual events. We have a large golf event that'll be coming up in October. Uh, It's also our 25th anniversary. So we will be having an event in September And then every year we have a Christmas program, which is attended by almost a thousand community members. It is a free event that we open up to the community every year, sort of a thank you uh, for everyone's contributions and our students are the performers. So Uh it's just a magical, wonderful evening. But we also, our next event coming up this year, we're really excited about is uh, in celebration of our 25th anniversary, and it is called A Night Full of Stars, and it is a benefit that will be headlined by Lady A. So we are super excited about that, and that'll be on April 16th this year. Okay, and you can get information on their website. Absolutely. Visit our events tab on our website, and all the information is there. And it's brightstone.org? Yes. Okay, thank you. Carrie Bryant, the Marketing and Communications Manager with Brightstone. We'll put more links and more info on our Focus Facebook page. Make sure you join us again next week. I'm Anna Marie, and that's Focus.